Hello, and welcome back to the 25th episode of Drake Speaks. This week we are talking Eros and Psyche, my second or third favorite myth, depending on the day. Eros and Psyche is technically more of a Roman myth than a Greek one. I think it's an Ovid's, Ovid's Metamorphosis, um, and it tells the story of how Eros, the goddess of god of love, found his wife, and it is very reminiscent of, like, Cinderella and very reminiscent of Beauty and the Beast, uh, Beauty and the Beast and Hades and Persephone and Eros and Psyche kind of form this weird triumvirate a little bit. And a little bit into, um, at least with Beauty and the Beast and Hades and Persephone, into Phantom of the Opera. It's less Eros and Psyche, though it's an angelic figure. Tangent. <laughs> so this week we talk about Eros and Psyche, if you couldn't have told tell. I prefer the word Eros uh, because I am a hack for the Greeks and that's the way I learned it. But Cupid is just as valid in my opinion. Um, Cupid actually comes from the Latin Cupido Cupere. Yeah, when you're a classics major you also have to take Latin and Greek and it's great. So Cupido Cupere in Latin is I desire or to desire as the verb and that's literally so his name is literally like he who desires. Or like, yeah, basically he who, he who desires. Eros in Greek, if you look a lot of uh, at theology, and especially later Christian theology, the Greeks have like three or four basic kinds of love. There's agape, which is like just general love, and then there's storge, which is like love between family, I think. Uh, mania is like raw, like sexual love kind of thing, and then eros is desire and kind of like it's it's the closest thing to like relationship love that the Greeks have. Eros and Cupid basically are just like desire personified. Cupid is also seen as a puto, which is a little winged Italian baby. Um, that's who you see on Christmas card, not Christmas. Valentine's cards, and he is generally considered, the baby form of him is generally considered, uh, the son of Ares and Aphrodite, which he's also the son of Ares and Aphrodite in this telling. But if you look at the theogony, he has a basis in being a child of chaos, um, so he's similar to, uh, Gaia and Tartarus in that regard. So yeah, he's either a primordial being, or the god of love, the son of God, the son of love and war. Which, actually, with his son of um, Aphrodite and Ares thing, it's interesting because he's very much one of his mother's, like, attendants. But he also uses the bow and arrow, which is his father's realm of things. Have I mentioned I uh, ramble a lot? Because I do. So getting into the actual myth, Psyche is this very pretty princess, you know, like every Disney princess, um, and she, uh, has two sisters, and the townspeople in her area start worshipping her as Aphrodite, and if you know anything about Aphrodite, this is not a good idea, and <laughs> even to the point where Psyche's like, guys, I don't want to get smote, please stop, um, anyway, so... She's also the adoring fans, blah, 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 blah. And her parents, okay, are like, okay, you have all these suitors. Which one do you want to marry? And they go to the oracle, and her dad asks, okay, who should I give my daughter to? And the oracle says, your, your daughter's not going to marry uh, a mortal man. He's gonna marry, she's going to marry some force that even the gods fear. And, like, Zeus can't control, and his massive dragon monster thing. But, you know, in better wording, and probably in ancient Greek. And Dad comes home and is like, Okay, we have to abandon you on the side of a cliff so you can go off with your monster boyfriend. So they abandon her on the side of a cliff in, like, funeral clothing. And eventually she falls asleep, and the West Wind picks her up and takes her to this invisible mansion. And, or this mansion with invisible servants, rather. And they are like, oh, your husband's so great. Oh, he'll be home at night, da 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 And so, nightfall, she goes to sleep, and her husband's there. And he doesn't 
feel like a dragon. He feels like a very, very attractive man. So they start cuzzling up, cu- nuzzling up, good lord, nuzzling up, and, you know, start cuddling and talking, and then they fall in love with each other slowly. Well, the backstory to this is, Eros, Aphrodite's really, really jealous that Psyche's getting worshipped and all this attention, and so she tells Eros to go and, you know, make Psyche fall in love with a bear or something. Because Eros, when you get shot with one of those arrows, you fall in love with whatever you see next. Uh, This also happens to Apollo and Apollo and Daphne. So when he goes to shoot Psyche, he's so distracted by her beauty that he pricks himself on his own arrow and falls in love with her. Good job, buddy. And (laughs) anyway, so his big plan is, yes, to abduct her and do all this. So they, you know, have done this for about a month. She's pregnant. And Eros says, okay, you can never see my face. Like, you can live in this house, you can have all these servants, but you can never see my face. And he, and like, he's like, okay, I just want to see my sisters because I'm really lonely. So Eros is like, uh, okay, are you sure you want to do that? And it's like, he's kind of like, yeah. Um, so he's like, okay, so the sisters come back. And the sisters are married to the standard Greek man at the this point in time which is you know 30 years older than them and gross and hairy and old (laughs) and so they're jealous of psyche's really attractive house and servants and really really attractive husband and they're like obviously he's fattening up you have to kill you like like he's gonna kill you like you married a monster it's fine um and so they finally convince psyche to look at him through a candle like with in candlelight and kill him if he's a monster and so oh also psyche's pregnant at this point i don't know if i made that clear and so psyche's like okay so she takes a candle in to the bedroom and takes a knife and when she lights the candle if she figures out it's eros and she's so startled that she like shifts and the candle wax wax fall onto him and wakes him up and he's like oh the betrayal oh you know in the dramatic way the Greek gods are. And he flies off to um, Aphrodite, who's consoling her baby. And, you know, Psyche's really sad, and she goes to Aphrodite and is like, look, I mean, oh, I made a mistake, I want my husband back. And Aphrodite, who is still mad about the whole prettier than thou thing, uh, is like, okay, I am going to make you do a bunch of tasks, and if you can complete them, you can get arrows back. And so she dumps out this, like, giant bag of, like, grain and barley and oats and says, okay, you have to sort all these by the end of the night. Psyche starts crying, and then she realizes a bunch of ants are taking up the different seeds and everything and bringing them into piles. So it's done by, like, 30 minutes. And then Aphrodite gets pissed, and she's like, okay, whatever. And so her second, Psyche's second task is there's these... Golden fleeced rams. Wow, the Greeks really recycled their material. <laughs> There's these sheep with golden fleece, and they eat humans. So it's like, and so Aphrodite says, "Okay, go get some. Go, go get some of their fleece." And the the reeds next to Psyche say, "Hey, wait for them to move away from the bushes, and they just yank it out of the bushes." So like twenty minutes later, Psyche comes back with his arm full of golden fleece. Aphrodite gets a little bit more mad, and so she goes, Okay, I want you to take this jar and fill it with river stick water. <laughs> or the water of the river sticks. And Zeus himself intervenes and sends an eagle to grab the cup and, like, fly it under the sticks and then bring it back to Psyche. And all the gods are like, Oh my god, just chill, Aphrodite. And finally, Aphrodite says, Okay, I want you to take this box and go to the underworld and get some of Persephone's beauty with it in it and come back and bring it to me. And Psyche's like, okay, fine, whatever. And Aphrodite, or Psyche, scoots down to the underworld, gets the beauty, starts coming back, starts thinking, okay, I'm about to see Eros again. Maybe I want to not be pregnant and, like, I want to be pretty, basically. And she opens the box, instant, like, death like coma like she's alive she's just basically in a coma and eros who has been fine and like is totally forgiven psyche 
uh, finally escapes Aphrodite and, like, finds her, brings her up to Olympus, wakes her up, and is basically, like, shouts at Zeus, like, make her immortal, make her my wife, I'm done with all this, just end it. And so, it's like he wakes up, and they get married, and, uh, she gives birth to their daughter, Hedone, which is the goddess of pleasure, and it's where we get the word hedonist from, and Aphrodite has to kind of chill out. Uh, Psyche is the name for the soul in Greek, uh, Suke, that's where we get psychology and stuff like that, um, and Eros, again, erotic, all that. So it's like the physical love and the soul love coming together. It's also like the name for butterfly, um, it's also the word in Greek for butterfly, so she's sometimes depicted with butterfly wings, and I, I just read this theory in this book I'm reading that, like, it's like, to have physical love, your soul has to change, like, like, butterflies do, which I kind of like that idea, but I don't know how much I agree with it. One thing I was interested, though, uh, the, the opening of the box from Persephone is kind of reminiscent of, uh, Pandora's Pithos. Did I ever talk about that? Note to self. Make an episode on Pandora, because it's interesting. And Prometheus, because he's also cool. Anyway, so she... It's very reminiscent of that, and it's very reminiscent of the Garden of Eden, and the snake, and everything. So yeah, that is Eros and Psyche. It is probably one of my favorite myths. If I had to rank them, I'd say Perseus, Medusa, Eden, Persephone, uh, Eros, and Psyche. So yeah, uh, as always, if you have any specific myths you want me to look at, leave them in the comments below, and I will see you next week. Bye!